I would heartily recommend if anyone is thinking about buying a house in this part of the world, go for it. Yeah. Just yeah. don't hold back, just go for it. Just do it. It's, yeah, just do it. Yeah. You won't regret it. No, absolutely not. It's not one minute that I regret buying this house. You can't regret this view. You wanted a sea view and you've got a sea view. <laughs> <laughs> to invite you back to the house because it's so different from the yeah. house that you sold us. It wow. is. It is. So Kate bought a house uh, from us just before COVID, so in 2020, uh, in February 2020, and you embarked on a completely new renovation project uh, from afar, from the UK, and which I'm sure wasn't easy, but you've taken what was really just an unloved home, it was kind of semi-reformed, which kind of put a lot of people off because they felt like, well, the house is already being reformed, so we don't want to do it again. You've done an incredible thing, and it would be great to just hear a little bit more about what, you know, the experience that you went through with buying it, how you came to find this house in the first place, and how you found both doing the renovation and settling in today and, you know, getting to know the, the neighborhood. I was having lunch with my partner and my daughter in Dea and I made an excuse really. I did make an excuse to go to Charles Marlow um, and I think I probably said, oh, I need to go to the pharmacy or I need to go to the supermarket, something. It's a little <laughs> ruse. Anyway, I went to Charles Marlow and Maria was there and I said, what about this little house? I'd quite like to go and have a look at it. And luckily Maria said, yeah, I've got a spot, we can go and see the house. So I went back and I, did, I hadn't even had my lunch. They were still having lunch. And I said, OK, right, you need to hurry up. You've got about 15 minutes to finish your lunch because we're going to look at a house. <laughs> and that was kind of it, really, yeah. because we came here and completely fell in love with the view. But the house felt extremely unloved and really sad. Yeah, but it was. I was. I, we were all we were all in love with the house at that point. Um, so we took lots of photographs, went back home, and then sort of had a think about things. And that's kind of it, really. Mm. And then, did you know Daya before you'd been to Daya? Been to Daya. Been to Daya quite a few times. Really loved it. I mean, it's it's incredibly magical, isn't it? Mm. You know, when you when you come off the plane and you drive from Palma and you come towards Valdemosa and you go up the mountains and you come towards Dea. I mean, it, it, it is the most, it's a fairy tale, magical experience, experience. isn't it? Yeah, it, it is. really is. And I don't think it, it's, it's still heart stopping, actually, I think. It takes your breath away, it's so beautiful. Um, it is. You've described that really well. It's heart stopping, and it is. Yeah, it you know, is. It I really mean, is. every day driving into the mountains, you just you never get tired of it. You no. never do. And so, had you had you always had your heart set on doing a renovation? Not necessarily, but it's easy to say as somebody who loves design and who is a florist and who did a. I have a qualification in interior design. It's very easy to say that you'll accept somebody else's ideas. Mm -hmm of a house and to say that you'll just walk into something and you won't do anything to it but I could say that to myself but whether that's true I'm not sure yeah. probably not <laughs> probably probably not so in which case this was perfect this house because it had it had been done up but not in a way that was inspiring or kind of intrinsic to the soul of the place definitely or which respected the countryside in which it sits mm. or or in a Mallorquin way and I don't mean that to sound like we wanted to make it a pastiche or a cliche of something Mallorquin but but to make something which felt like honest mm. inspired by its surroundings exactly basically. I felt like 
so lucky when we met you, Maria, because I just felt you were very honest with us about the house and uh, and also about other houses that we saw. So there was a, a sort of a, a complete honesty that was um, refreshing, I've got to say, mm. um, and and also the help that you gave us with you know, getting the right lawyer, architect, getting um, somebody to look after the house. Um, I've just felt that like to be a very seamless, helpful, honest experience. And, and also, you know, as somebody who's buying a house when you live in another country, it's quite difficult to navigate the process, isn't it? You know, to know, you know, can you trust people? and how difficult is it going to mm, be. Definitely, yeah. So I feel that this has been, despite COVID, has actually been a very simple yeah. and, and honest process with, with that, and everybody that you've recommended to us has been simply amazing. Yeah, I think, I, I think that's the most important thing. It's, it's always to use local people. And this house is almost a prime example of why we say you, you must use local people because they know the houses and they know how, how they need to work. Yeah. Well, they understand lots of things, don't they, about the, um, you know, even the way that wardrobes need to be. Exactly. Or just every, everything yeah. about the, the, kitchen, the climate yeah. and, and also just, just trying to keep it real and not, not bring in things which don't fit or, or yeah. they're not in keeping because essentially this, I think this house is beautiful now because yeah. it, everything that we've tried to use and the local artisans have put that they've all put their heart and souls into yeah. making this special yeah and so you bought the house and then you yeah decided you were gonna renovate it you chosen your your architect it was Peter Hudson um, how did that go Peter's been absolutely incredible yeah. he's just been the safest pair of hands um, I've not felt worried or concerned about anything because he's brought on board some fantastic craftspeople, you know, everybody from the carpenters to the electricians to the plumbers to the stonemasons, they've all done a really fantastic job. But not only that, it's like Peter just comes with something else because, you know, he's thought about how we might use the space, so for example, it was his idea to create this amazing pergola and I wouldn't have thought of that. Yeah. And that's really made a huge difference yeah, it does. to yeah. the way that the house works. Exactly. The, the overall usability of it. Um, we would probably have just put loads of parasols yeah. and that would have looked nothing like this no. does. Yeah. And that's I, a, yeah. I love it, it's transformed the space. Yeah. And then also the bathrooms, I think it's done a beautiful job yeah. with the bathrooms and with the kitchen. Um, it's, it was very difficult to to have everything, have all the work done when we were living in a different country. Mm. Um, but having Peter and his safe pair of hands and Miguel, who is a fantastic builder, um, it couldn't have. It was it Take was really it. quite easy, and they they've taken care of everything. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so were there any, any challenges? I mean, was there any kind of frustrations on your part, perhaps from not being able to come out and see the house in person? Definitely some frustrations in not being able to come out to see the house. Like every morning we would wake up and we would say, I just want to be in Mallorca. <laughs> <laughs> when I finally did get here on the 31st of May, I actually I touched the stone and I actually cried. I was so really, yeah. Yeah, it was felt like so overwhelming because yeah. I'd been, you know, deciding on things from afar and buying things, and yeah, it was just it was like that culmination of that just that, that pent up desire over right, so yeah. many months. Yeah. So Maria sent me a list of various furniture suppliers, including Rialto Living, and unfortunately for my budget, the minute <laughs> I saw Rialto Living, it wasn't really another choice. So, um, so just before the start of Covid, uh, my partner and I went to see, we made an appointment to go and see Rialto Living, 
and I just felt so confident that they could do a beautiful job and they could do it in, in time and on budget. So that's what we did. And so I had already made lots of many, many, many different floor plans, but um, actually I ended up leaving it to Rialto Living. And so did they come and do a floor plan or do they came, measure the space? Yeah, absolutely everything. Uh, it was literally a sort of turnkey service for the furniture and, and all of the fabrics, which obviously, you know, we just we discussed and we came to look at the fabrics and the, and all of the furniture and, and all of those things and I sent them photographs of the things that I'd seen in their store which I really liked most of which are in the house um, but yeah Jalma Benassar at um, Rialto has been incredible yeah. really really just done a beautiful job and again a lovely person to deal with you know yeah, just yeah. very kind very sweet I'm super happy there's not one thing in the house that he's that that together we selected yeah. that I'm not happy with. I think yeah. it's you know, and that first time when we when we were able to come back in July last year, and to see the the, the whole housescape, I was literally blown away. Yeah. So this is your first summer as a day of resident. Mm. Um, how has it been? Just kind of settling in. I know you've been here for about a month already now. You've had some friends visit. How yeah. have you experience, how's your experience been of your first summer as a day of resident in this new beautiful home? I find it to be a really friendly community. Yeah. Um, people seem to be very open, uh, very chatty. Like everyone you speak to has got, you know, an interesting story. And I just think it's just been it's been amazing really, way more than I could have imagined. And it's so much more friendly than I ever really thought. And I didn't imagine that I would feel like I know so many people in such a short mm. period of time. And I, and that's not just me that feels that because I had two friends that were staying with me, one for two weeks when we, because the three of us arrived. One came for a week and then she rebooked and stayed for two and a half weeks. <laughs> My other friend who was coming for two weeks stayed for a month. Um, and she's and coming back again and in she's August. Coming, well, they're both coming back. <laughs> you can't get rid of but them. But they all feel sort of very... Connected. Connected, yes. I was going to say ensconced, that's not the right word, but yes, very connected. Yeah, yeah. And they've all made their own connections with different people. Um, and that's been really, really incredible and something that I didn't expect. Mm, it's lovely. Um, and we've also, you know, we were, we were lucky enough to have our um, caretaker house manager, Pep, who you also recommended. Uh, who could not be kind, could not be more helpful. You know, he's always here for anything that we want and I feel like, you know, he's really looking after us. Um, yeah, also... It's it, great and it takes away the headache of any kind of yeah, teething problems uh, exactly. of moving into I always home. feel that he's always looking out for us and, you know, he's, you know, he's always saying, OK, well, I've noticed that this might need some work or this needs changing or the pool's a little bit low or mm. you know the electricity I don't know, something but he's he's always just checking out you know I, I feel like even if a light bulb had gone he would be there and he'd be on it and he yeah. would let me know that you know that something needs to be That's been checked on which is really puts your mind at rest when you have a house abroad and um so tell me about the artwork. How did you go about choosing what artwork to put in the, in the house to go with the new <laughs> beautiful interiors? Well, I, f I saw one of the paintings at Rialto Living um, and actually that artist was also exhibiting at Grey's Gallery, which I think is two or three doors down from Charles Marlowe. I fell in love with um, Leela's work. And I saw it in your office. Mm -hmm. Because you have got a beautiful gallery, haven't you, of, yeah. of uh, local artists working in, in your um, in your office? So I particularly was drawn to Leela's work, and um, and then and then coincidentally bumped into her at the beautiful summer party that you arranged at uh, Shortet. Mm -hmm. um, so after that, I I just made contact with her. I was looking at her work on online, and I made contact and. Gosh, I could have bought, I bought three paintings. I could have bought many more. <laughs> could have filled the house with uh, Leela Wars work because it's, again, it's sort of, I don't know, it sort of connects with nature and it feels 
Mallorquin and authentic and local and yeah. Yeah, the one in the little casita it's over so there, pretty, it almost it? feels like a window, doesn't it? That you're it looking really out does, into... it really does. Yeah. It's so beautiful. It yeah, I love it. And they're, they're gentle pieces, aren't they? Yeah. So thank you so much, Kate, for allowing us to have a sneak peek around the house. And I know you've invited me to a couple of your incredible dinner parties. And I'm sure there's the first of many of you to, you I to entertain so. I friends so. and family and uh, it's been really interesting and it's been incredible to, to well you know to have a client turn into a friend as well you know it's been a really lovely experience for us as well so i hope you enjoy the house and can't wait to come back again next year and see you Thank again you. well i hope you're going to come back before <laughs> next, next month exactly next what's year? next year I mean, next week, <laughs>